for the longest time, Life Journal was the dominant uh, blogging platform used in Russia. And uh, Life Journal actually originated in the States. It's, uh, and it was very popular here as a blogging platform among teenagers for several years. And kind of fizzled when, when Facebook showed up. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but it continued to be very popular in Russia until two or three years ago. Uh, and it's, it also sort of fizzled. And moreover, uh, similar platforms uh, showed up, uh, uh, sort of clone platforms were written and used in various communities in Russia. So it's not just LifeJournal, it's this whole sort of phenomenon. Now, what makes LifeJournal different as a platform? Uh, most blogging platforms are sort of st uh, are so called standalone blogs. So you start a blog, you start writing it, and you hope people read it. And if you write a good blog in a normal country, then what happens is that people read it because they're, you know, you're putting out a lot of signals that, uh, uh, that sort of position you and, uh, and people recognize you as somebody that they should read uh, from the, uh, from, uh, from the messages that you're sending out, positioning yourself in the social and political landscape. If you're a really great blogger, then your information starts sort of uh, bubbling up and ending up in the conventional media uh, and then trickling back down and ending up in other blogs, and that's how it circulates. That's in a normal country. Uh, in a country that's been informationally atomized, like Russia has been, none of that happens. So you can't use a standalone blog, because then you would just be talking to yourself. Um, which is why LiveJournal, which is a sort of a hybrid of a, of a blogging platform and a social network, really caught on. The way you use LiveJournal is that you, uh, you start a blog, and you, uh, you start friending people who, who have blogs. And, uh, and they can friend you back or not friend you back. Uh, but once you friend them, and this is what's uh, different from Facebook, and remember, this, 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 was, this is a program written 10 or 11 years ago, right? So this is, this is totally pre-Facebook. Um, once you friend them, they have access to your uh, private uh, notes or your notes for friends only, regardless of whether they have reciprocated. Right? So that's different from, from Facebook. Um, and um, and you, uh, what's also different from Facebook and very important to LiveJournal is that you create your own uh, feed right? that is accessible not just to you but to anybody who wants to, uh, uh, to be friends with you or, uh, or just wants to check you out. Right? So you, you, you go to somebody's blog and you think this person is interesting. Let me see what he reads. And a, a huge phenomenon in Russia was, for the longest time, reading other people's feeds. That was a way of exchanging information. The problem with LiveJournal uh, is that it's basically uh, an echo cha chamber, right? Because you handpick your audience, mm. uh, and those are the people you're addressing. Uh, and there's this uh, company in, uh, in, in New York City which, uh, uh, called Morningside Analytics. They were really uh, prominent a few years ago when they were doing all these maps of the blogospheres of, of different countries. So uh, I talked to them when they had just finished uh, a map of the Russian blogosphere. And they said, you know, it doesn't look like anything we've ever seen. Because uh, a normal uh, uh, map uh, of the English language blogosphere or the Persian language blogosphere, even though uh, you know, they're completely different scales, they look exactly the same. Uh, it's a, a set of overlapping circles. Right? So that, uh, for example, if you're an Iranian blogger uh, blogging in the cons uh, politically conservative part of the blogosphere, your circle overlaps with the poetry circle, which overlaps with the politically liberal part of the blogosphere. So you get there mm -hmm. from here in two steps. The Russian blogosphere looks like a series of discrete, completely unconnected circles. You can't get there from here. Everybody is talking to their closest friends. Um, that's the problem uh, with social media, is that social media reflects what's going on uh, in society, right? Uh, so it, it doesn't connect people if they're not actively connecting. There's nothing, you know, that's, that's a huge myth. Uh, about social media. There's, there's nothing built in that gets people, uh, uh, there are tools that allow people to have uh, more effective connections and faster connections than in real life. But there is nothing to make them connect <coughs> when they're not already connecting. So 
That said, uh, you know, Facebook has been hugely important because uh, for people who are already connecting and for people who are active about looking for information, um, it's a much better tool than anything that's available to us in Russia because any site that we put up in Russia that's, uh, uh, that's part of the protest movement is brought right down by DDoS attacks. And Facebook is invulnerable to them.